So I believe uh, there's another student who did a similar thing. Is it? Okay, okay. you want to add on? Because then the lesson will become very coherent if you can add on to what she has said. Okay. Is the file with me or is it with you? Okay. And then we added uh, air resistance to the question. For this, for this, for, for this circle, the mass is 1 kg. For this is 20 kg. So they, they define mass, but, uh, but uh, for Akuma's side, she didn't have the, uh, she didn't have the difference in mass or friction or air resistance. Yeah, but we added that. So, like, Uh, you, you need to scroll the time bar so that they are both on the on the slope because if not then the comparison will not be fair. Uh, okay. okay. for acceleration of circle three, right? It's one point two nine nine. And for acceleration on circle six, right? It was three point five two three. Yeah. So there's a difference. Because you see, right, um, with more mass, right, there will be more kinetic energy and you will make the person move faster. That's what we learn. Any question? He has more kinetic energy. Yeah. yeah. So you will accelerate faster down the slope. Uh, that's one way of looking at the answer. Uh, but I was hoping you could analyze it from a uh, total force. Are you able to uh, F equal ma? Are you able to think in terms of F equal ma to conclude? Yeah, because you see, let's see. Yeah, so you have the and. Yeah, as you can see that. Yeah. Okay. For example, if your force is on both the doors are uh, 10 meters, then for um, for several three that will be uh, uh, the F will be then you can uh, uh, minus air resistance, let's say 5. Then the mass is 5, right? So the acceleration will be. Because for Abuwasha, um, she didn't have the air resistance, so the acceleration for both is the same. But with air resistance, the acceleration for both is different. So. Okay, uh, maybe I help them a little bit, is it alright? Okay, uh, I think what happened is this, in their simulation, their world had air resistance, okay? Their world had air resistance, so you go to world, okay, you, you look at their world, uh, air resistance, the us had air resistance, uh, it was high air resistance, so when they run the simulation, there was air, uh, I taught them, to change the arrow to show the net force. Uh, this purpose here is to allow the student uh, to visually understand that the net force causes the acceleration down the slope. So I thought this visualization uh, was kind of helpful. Uh, but I, I think somehow through the course of the presentation, they use numbers here. Uh, technically speaking, they are on the right track. I understand what they are trying to say, but um, maybe to use interactive physics to explain this, maybe I pull down the screen, huh? so you can see, yeah? uh, maybe to use interactive physics, you all want to sit, sit down and, and uh, get comfortable. Huh? So what happened is this, uh, I, I think they are, you all also know this really, uh, you just click on the object, then you go to vector, you don't, you don't select total, total force, okay, instead, you might want to see something called 
uh, air force, which is air resistant. Then you might want to see something called contact force. Then you might want to see something called gravity force. Okay. So as you can see, uh, as the ball rolls down, this air resistance grows. So it grows so that for the net force is now a shorter arrow. Okay. Now if I were to do it for the other ball, okay, instead of looking at the total force, or total force, I want to see in vector uh, format gravity force, air resistance, and followed by contact force. So it, it, it is not obvious to you, uh, maybe I zoom out, uh, see, uh, I zoom out, okay, so there's this humongous weight because they use a number which is very big, 220 I think, so the component of the force along the slope subtract the air resistance, it will create a large force. Okay. Then if you use F equal to MA, okay. if you use, uh, this, this will be a large force, huh? uh, component basically is MG sine theta minus air resistance, this will be equal to MA, because there's a component of the weight uh, that is this forcing the object going down the slope. You understand component by now? Okay. So the component here, mg sine theta, is the force uh, that causes the ball to accelerate down. Minus the air resistance. Okay. Air resistance is dependent on the speed. So assuming that they are fairly the same, when you bring the mass down, okay, when you bring the mass down, you find that the bigger the mass, you see, yeah, from physics, uh, from algebra, the bigger the mass, you find that the acceleration is. What is something minus a number which is divided by m? But the bigger the mass, this number become smaller. smaller. So this minus something small. So therefore, a is basically g sine theta. Okay. Now imagine. Now we talk about the object that is very light. Okay, something very light. So now the mass is quite small. Okay, this is uh, for this is for acceleration for an object which mass is very big. This is acceleration for a mass which the mass is very small. So now you divide by something which is very small, maybe say one kilogram. Then the air resistance. So this number become quite big. So g sine theta minus something quite big. So therefore acceleration become smaller. So for them. They are trying to do something which is slightly beyond uh, what uh, Aprova has done because Aprova's situation was ideal, where air resistance was neglected. Basically, that situation is good enough for your syllabus. Okay, what this team of students has attempted to do is they try to go slightly beyond the syllabus and talk about the effects of air resistance, causing the conclusion that ultimately mass, uh, the bigger the mass. What happens? The bigger the mass, the bigger the acceleration. Oh, this is what uh, they are trying to explain here. Any question? Okay. If no question, okay, thank you very much. Okay. Who's one? Who's going next? You are running from the disk, right? Yeah. Okay. You have to bring a disk.